Hi everyone, welcome to week 14. This is going to be the last topic. Um, we are going to learn how to graph certain trigonometric functions, um, just the sine and cosine. Before that, let's do a quick review on what a graph is. We sort of made some inroads in studying vectors when we were introduced to the coordinate system. For example, we say this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. The right side of x-axis is positive. Moving to the left means negative. This here is zero. Going up is positive and going down is negative. Additionally, we have seen that we can plug various angles into sine x and cosine x to get outputs. And then what we define a graph is a drawing that shows a relationship between the input, that's the x value, and the output, which is the y value. So for example, let's say I'm working with sine x. Um, make sure that your calculator is in um, radian mode. And then I'm just going to plug in these values of x into each of these, um, into sine x to get the value. So for example, when I plug in sine of 0, it's going to come out to 0. Then I go sine of pi divided by 6, it is 0. 0.5. Then I go sine of pi divided by 4 at 0 0.707, sine of pi divided by 3, 0 0.866. Again, um, what you can do is you can pause the video and try to fill this up on your own and verify by looking at my answers to make sure that you are doing it correctly. 5 pi divided by 4 is negative 0 0.707. Um, sine of 3 pi divided by 2 is negative 1. Then you have sine of um, 7 pi divided by 4, negative 707, and then back to 0. Now, if I try to pl plot these values, these are going to be x and these are going to be y values. So I have 0, um, let's say I have pi, and then I have 2 pi. Now what I notice is from going from 0 to pi, if you see, it reaches a maximum of 1 at pi over 2. And then it starts reducing and comes back to 0. And then it becomes negative and reaches negative 1 at 3 pi over 2. And then goes back to 0. So the graph of sine is going to look like it, it increases. Sorry. Um, it increases and then reaches zero and then decreases and then comes back to zero. This is the shape of the graph. It's not accurate, but you get the idea. But the maximum value is one and the minimum value is negative one. So this is what the graph of a sine function looks like. If you repeat the same process with um, cosine, you're going to get a shape like this. So in general, this is what we say. When we have y equals sine x, you have these five points, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. The max value is 1, and the min value is negative 1. Cosine is sort of similar, except it starts at 1, and then it goes to 0, and then it goes to negative 1, and then to 0, and back to 1. So it's, it's a sine graph shifted slightly. Again, you have the same five points, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now there are some important terms we use when we talk about these graphs. Amplitude, that's the highest value. The amplitude of sine and cosine both is one. As you can see, the highest value is one. We use A to denote that. The next thing is time period. That's the value of X after which the graph repeats itself. And here it is, two pi. What this means is, for example, here, if you look at this graph, if you follow it, then after this point, it's a repetition, right? This means that wherever it repeats, that's your time period. So the time period is pi. The amplitude is the maximum value, which is two. Over here, um, again, right here, from here, it starts repeating. If you look at it, it looks the same as the first half. So the time period in this case is four pi, and the amplitude is one half. So that's the basic definition of time period and amplitude. 
Now let's study the impact of multiplying a number in front of sine x and cosine x. If I multiply 2 in front, what, what this does is, since it's a sine, I know the shape is the same. The amplitude now is 2. So this number causes the amplitude to change, which makes this 2 and the lowest value negative 2. The time period remains the same, so it's 2 pi. So these points, the 5 points are going to be 0, 2 pi, half of 2 pi is pi, then half of that is pi over 2, and the average of pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. Similarly with cosine, you just have to be careful with the shape of cosine, and the amplitude is 2 and negative 2, the time period is unchanged at 2 pi. So this is 2 pi, halfway is pi, half of that is pi over 2, and the average of 2 pi and pi is 3 pi over 2. Okay, now what happens when I multiply it by negative? So let's start by maybe doing 3 sine x. If I look at regular 3 sine x, that's 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, but the amplitude now is 3 and negative 3. So for this, the amplitude is 3, and the time period is 2 pi. But if I make this negative, what's going to happen is all of these positive values now become negative, and all of the negative values become positive. So it kind of flips. Everything else remains the same. The maximum value is still 3 and the time period is still 2 pi. 1 half cosine x again um, shape of cosine x doesn't change. <clears throat> what changes is the amplitude. So this is 1 half and this is negative 1 half. So the amplitude is 1 half and the time period is 2 pi. So that's the effect of the number in front. It changes the amplitude and if it has a negative sign then you have to flip. The positive becomes a negative, the negative becomes a positive. Now in the next videos we are going to look at some other um, things that can be done to modify the graph.